but obviously a lot of fighters are, have you know been sort of struggling during this time but for me it's almost as if nothing's really changed uh, training wise I, I may have concentrated on certain other things uh, a little bit more earlier on is when the lockdown sort of just started um, I mean, listen, when your dad's your head coach living in the same household and you've got a gym at home, you know, it's pretty easy for me. So I'm, I'm very grateful and fortunate that I have those things that, you know, available to me so I can just train. And, you know, I, I was able at the beginning to do more runs when I couldn't get training partners in. But now that I'm able to get training partners in as well, so I've pretty much been preparing very specifically to myself. I mean, sometimes, you know, during fight camp, you're going to a class or a session and it's uh, geared towards you know, teaching everyone as opposed to just doing things specifically for yourself. So um, it's good that now I've had even more specificity during my, uh, during my training. And uh, I think it's made me an even better martial artist. Like I'm a lot cleaner with my technique, which, you know, like going over drilling stuff uh, has been a big, big important thing. And uh, yeah, so I'm very grateful for that. So I feel like I'm going to be even more of a dangerous fighter as we come out of this lockdown. It's actually interesting to hear because a lot of fighters are struggling to get the bodies in and mm -hmm. to get some proper training. And on the weekend, we've seen a load of fighters miss weight as well. So you actually think you're you're actually getting better quality training and more focused due, due to yeah. what's going on? Yeah, 100%. I mean, even just the drilling. I mean, you know, my dad's been helping me out a lot. Like stuff that I couldn't necessarily go over beforehand because I've, I've just done it in a session where I try and, you know, squeeze in a couple of reps here and there, you know, through the week. I've been able to do way more of. So now my techniques become, you know, become a lot crisper and stuff like that. But like I said, I'm fortunate, you know, to have a gym at home. I mean, like I say, other fighters don't have access to that. So, you know, uh, that's what's been able to, to help me, you know, progress uh, during this time. And my cardio feels like, you know, I feel like I could go five rounds right now. So it's really good, especially when I'm preparing for a three round fight. Good, good. And how are you, how are you coping with the, the layoff? I think it was November we last saw your fight. So how's that been? Um, I'm not going to lie. At the beginning, it was a not to say there was a struggle. I, the thing is, I'm a martial artist. I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm not the type of guy where you finish a fight and then it's like, oh, yeah, just party around, you know, no training and, and sort of relax. For me, I want to become the most dangerous, deadly fighter out there and try and improve my skill set as much as possible. So I've always been, you know, training uh, consistently after the fight. As soon as the fight finished on Monday, I was back in the training room getting ready to, 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 to like I say, improve my skill set because I've got to be ready. You know, I was thinking in my head, I want to be ready to fight on the world stage in the UFC. So you know, I, I pretty much went back to normal. But I mean, listen, it got to like January and there was no, you know, I didn't really know what was going on when my next fight would be, what was happening. And, you know, I had, I kept nagging my manager, you know, asking like, you know, what's going on? Like, you know, what are we doing? And then we had a couple of phone calls and, you know, the, the main thing that we were looking to do is either get on a card last minute or uh, go to the contender series. Um, so that was sort of the plan that we were looking at because they weren't trying to sign any more new guys because uh, the only times they've signed guys now really have all just been last minute because none of the guys on the roster are available to fight. So they have to just sign guys to fill up the card. So, um, you know, it was a bit, it was a little bit stressful in that regard in terms of, you know, uh, I wanted to get a fight straight away. You know, I just finished the fight, you know, and I, I wanted to keep the ball rolling and, you know, there was nothing that I could do. So I really had to just try and focus on getting better, which is all great. And, you know, as a martial artist, I'm always trying to get better. But, you know, you always want to have a fight to, to even give yourself a bit more of an inspiration and a boost and, and motivation and stuff like that. And then, obviously, uh, then the phone call came that I got signed by the UFC, at, uh, you know, at the beginning of January. And then, you know, sort of things change even more. Then I was just even more happy and more. And it happened at the right time because bloody hell, if it would have, you know, if we were like looking to try and get a contender series or something, that's not even happening this year. So uh, it was a really, really good timing. Every, I feel everything fell in the right place. And then, uh, yeah, like I say, uh, once once I had that phone call and then, you know, they're trying to get me a fight and stuff like that, for me, it was just, okay, I'll be ready whenever they tell me to. So I haven't gotten out of shape. I haven't, you know, I haven't been out of training. So I've always kept, you know, even over Christmas, I don't know, people seen some videos on my Instagram and stuff like that. I was training out on the beach, you know, like with my dad with the pads and, you know, doing stuff while, you know, people was, I was still going to enjoy my Christmas a, a little bit, but at the same time, you know, we're still training. So, um, yeah, it was a little bit difficult, obviously, uh, trying to comprehend the fact that, you know, a fight may not come that soon. But, 
you know, when everything got set in place, then, you know, like I said, my motivation just kept rolling and, you know, I just kept in shape and kept training. So the fact that you've actually been signed to the UFC, you know, has that helped you, you know, deal with, you know, the layoff or is it, is it kind of, you just want to get in there now, like you've got this big opportunity yeah. and you haven't had the chance to take it yet? Yeah, so it's uh, it's a bit of both, isn't it? Um, uh, f- for me, you know, when I got signed to the UFC, obviously it was quite a euphoric feeling, you know, all, all the years of hard work, you know, all the grind, you know, finally it's paid off, you know, and they said, listen, you're probably not going to fight on the London card, but you'll fight early early summer. I mean, it was a little bit, you know, obviously because you, you can't tell anyone anything, so I had to try and keep my mouth shut whilst, you know, whilst everything was going on. And, you know, obviously that was, you know, I guess you could say a little frustrating. But at the end of the day, you know, you got you, you sort of got to be ready for everything. And then they got me a fight booked actually for May 16th, which was supposed to be in San Diego. Uh, that I was very looking forward to. And then obviously uh, as I signed the contract, that's when, the COVID stuff started happening. So, you know, all the excitement that, you know, my fight was going to get announced and this and that. And the next thing you know, the whole world shuts down. So, uh, but now I'm, you know, I'm very happy. And, 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 and like I say, glad I've got a great uh, management team, you know, Iridium Sports Agency. So they, uh, they helped to rebook the fight quite soon. And now July 15th, I'll be, I'll be making my UFC debut against the same opponent. So, uh, everything turned out very well. And uh, like I said, lockdown, giving me that extra time to sort of focus on myself, uh, took my attention away from, oh, when's the fight going to be booked? This, that, it sort of just gave me more attention on just improving myself. Yeah. And just um, for like our American fans, our low kick, we've got a lot of global fans and a lot of people won't know who you are. Those guys in the UK know who you are. I just want to give you a chance to like explain who you are, where you're from, what fans can expect from you once you're in the UFC? Yeah, so uh, I was born in Lithuania, so I'm actually Lithuanian uh, by nationality, but I moved to London when I was three years old. Uh, so, you know, it's it's a common phrase that I say, born in Lithuania, but bred in Britain. Um, you know, I've been training martial arts pretty much uh, since I was five years old. I won the British kickboxing title four years uh, for four different age groups and then um, I took a little hiatus away from it uh, I took a little break and then um, pretty much I went out to America funny enough I played basketball I went to school in Louisiana uh, I played there for two years I also played a bit of American football and then at the end of it you know obviously every kid's dream when they're when when they're playing their sports is to get a scholarship to D1 school I didn't get that uh, so you know my dad gave me a call and he said listen uh let's uh let, let, let's come back and let, let's get back into mma you know the sambo and kickboxing that i sort of been brought up with so when i was 18 came back home got the ball rolling seven and one amateur record then no one wanted to fight me so i had to turn pro when i was 21 uh had a very good start four and oh then i ended up losing two in a row uh then i had a whole load of like you know things i had to change and stuff like that and then got in the best shape of my life got injured uh then i was out for another year and a half and then uh yeah, but slowly but surely racked up some big wins. So now my record's 10 and 2. Um, and I like a very flashy sort of, I like to be a flamboyant fighter. I don't like to, you know, at the end of the day, people have only really seen my striking and me defending takedowns and getting back up to my feet. But they don't know that those areas of mine are like, you know, are quite solid also. They sort of expect me just to be the striker, but you got, you, you know, you, you lot have got, everyone's got to understand that, you know, in MMA, you got to be an all-rounded fighter. So for me, I'm always working extensively on, on on all those other aspects to be able to deal with anyone inside the cage. So I'm constantly working on that, but obviously I choose to strike first. And uh, obviously with the kickboxing background, I like to throw a lot of spinning stuff. I haven't been given that much of an opportunity because I've been you know, mainly stopping takedowns. But listen, now it's with the UFC and now I've really got to show everything that I'm capable of. You can expect that uh, that flashy sort of style to be put on on full, um, like I say, on 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 full full show uh, when when I go and fight. So I can't wait to go out and uh, put on a performance for everyone. Me neither, and we'll get on to it now. So it's Vinicius Moreira you're fighting. Um, just want to know what you you think about him, what you've seen of him, what you're expecting on fight night. Right. So from what I've seen, he's a a very extensive and good grappler. Um, you know, he takes his guys down to the floor and he really just suffocates them on the floor. 
So, you know, he's a very good jiu-jitsu guy and he's very good at his craft and he's very good at closing distance and, and you know, getting in on his opponents. But one area that I've seen that he's been lacking, of course he's going to be working on it, as anyone would do, uh, is, is in the striking department, which is where I see is going to be my main strength or my main attribute against him. Uh, but not only that, you know, I'm going to stop the takedowns. I'm going to fire at will with my striking and suffocate him from stand-up so that he can't do enforce any of his game. Um, so, you know, like I say, uh, all respect to him. But at the end of the day, this is my time. This is me now coming up. So I'm going to go out there and, and, and show them why I am the next big thing. Yeah, and he's coming. He's coming off three first round defeats. So, is there any, you know, extra pressure, or are you expecting a bit more from him? Considering he's probably fighting for his UFC career, career in this one, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, I expect him to obviously be, be be coming out all guns blazing because, as you said, you know, it is the last fight on his contract. Um, you know, he he ha he wasn't able to take the guys down in his last fights. Who knows what would have happened if he was managed to get them down and control those guys in those fights. Uh, but obviously he hasn't been able to. So that's going to be my goal in my fight is to make sure that he's not able to do that. I, I feel like there's no pressure. I know, I know I'm better. I know I've, I've got the skill set to go and beat him. All I've got to do now is relax and go and do the job. So for me, it's a chance for me to, to, to highlight my, my full skill set out there. And uh, I know he's going to bring it to me. And usually when people bring it, it brings the best out of me. And uh, listen, I, I can go five rounds right now, so I'm pretty sure he's not going to have the gas tank like mine, and I and, and I can't wait to go out there and uh, and uh, really enforce that onto him. Good, and and it's going to be on Fight Island, so a lot of people have been excited, you know, waiting for the announcement of Fight Island. It was dropped last week. Um, how how excited are you to actually fight in Abu Dhabi? Oh, mate, it's uh, listen, when I first got the call uh, to fight in May and it was in San Diego, I was obviously really excited to have an American debut. Uh, a lot of European fighters don't usually get that sort of opportunity. So for me, it was quite, you know, it's quite a big thing to be able to fight in America. Uh, obviously, when that got cancelled, it put, it put a bit of a downer. But at the same time, <laughs> you couldn't have asked for a really a better replacement to go into Abu Dhabi on Yars Island. Uh, you know, on like pretty much a haven, you know, they call it Billionaire's Row or something like that, like out there on that island. So it looks absolutely amazing. And, you know, in front of a stadium, in front of no crowd, I think it's just going to be an amazing experience, the whole thing. Um, it's it's something that, you know, like Dana White said, will go down in history as one of, one of the big sort of events. So I can't wait to be part of that. I've been part of many historic events like Night of Champions and now this. So, uh yeah, I'm just going to fully embrace uh, all, 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 the, all the spectacular stuff that goes with it. And so in terms of like the process and how it works, June, have the UFC give you details on how you'll get there and like things like that? I don't even know if like to fly in from the UK to Yaz Island right now. How's how's it all going to work? Um, to be honest, I don't <laughs> know. Like I say, I'll probably know like everything like pretty much last minute. Uh, from all. What I'm expecting is probably will be will because they said we're flying out from an airport, so we'll probably fly out from the airport just in a carriage with barely any people in it, which will be quite weird. But then after that, I'm guessing everything will be quite strict because I've heard that you know out there in uh, Abu Dhabi, it's it's probably the most restricted out of all the areas due to lockdown. So I'm guessing that will be as you know it would be quite cool us being escorted you know privately everywhere and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, man. Like, like I say, as soon as I know, you 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 know about it. So uh, I'll I'll get my I'll get my video recorder out and um, yeah, and then I'll, I'll I'll vlog the whole thing so the whole experience I can share with you lot. And beyond this fight and the rest of 2020, I'm sure you want to be more active and things like that. What what do you want from the rest of 2020 once you've got this first win under your belt? I want to have three fights this year. That is my that is my main. I actually have it written on my uh, on my vision board. Uh, I want to have three fights this year. I want to win big. I want to get three performance bonuses. I want to I want to go out and you know be 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 exciting. Be that fighter that people remember. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to slowly uh, work my way up the ranks. I've got a very tough tough opponent in front of me in Vinicius and. Uh, um, I put him on the highest priority right now. So, I, of course, I never look past an opponent. And, and I just want every single fight to have a slowly higher step in competition and slowly see myself uh, upgrading and getting better and slowly taking away the competition one by one. And that will start this year uh, with three big wins. And, and that's what I'm looking for. And then uh, it will put me in a really good position for next year. 
And you just mentioned you've got a vision board there. So is there something on there about what you want, you know, way down the line in the next three to five years? What's the big goal for you now you're in the UFC? What do you want to accomplish? Hmm. I mean, on my vision board, I, I do stuff more sort of in the nearer future or like in the year or within the next event and stuff like that. But if you're looking at my career as a whole, I want to be, I want to go down as one of the greatest fighters that I've ever entered the UFC on to Octagon. I think every, every fighter should have that goal or every fighter does, you know, wants to be that guy who, who's, who's, like I say, who's the most remembered of the sport or been, been known as the GOAT and stuff like that. So that's what I want to do. I want to make my mark on the UFC and it's my goal to, to, to get to the UFC light heavyweight championship within two to three years. So, you know, by the time I'm sort of 29, 28, 29, I want to be fighting for that world title. And, uh, the only way you're going to do that is you, whatever opponent they give you, you go and pick them off and you go and beat them. So at the end of the day, I'll be working my butt off, training myself, improving my skill set to go and do that exactly with all my opponents and then go and get that UFC world title. God, I can't wait to watch you do it, mate. Um, that's everything from me, unless you've got anything to add. Uh, no, nah, that's it, mate. I just uh, obviously want to uh, thank everyone for... For the for the amount of love and support that they're all giving me, all the all the sponsors and all the people that are helping me out, uh, I've got a massive massive uh, following and group of people that are like really right behind me and have always supported me. And just know to everyone that it truly means a lot. And uh, one uh, one day we'll all be partying out in a yacht somewhere in Las Vegas. And uh, I can't wait to take you all on my journey. And it's going to be amazing. And we're all going to rise up together and succeed together. Great. Well, good luck with the rest of camp and with fight nights. Can't wait to watch you. All right. Thank you very much, mate. Nice Thanks, one. Mate. Speak that. soon. Nice one. Speak soon. Bye-bye.